All right, thank you. So uh, today, 15 minutes demo on uh, kind of an introduction to Azure Dev Test Labs and enterprise development um, from a VM perspective, right? So one of the things about um, you know, large enterprise development projects is trying to get uh, a consistent dev test, you know, QA environment that matches across all things. So we're going to talk a little bit today about um, uh, dev test labs, right, and uh, VSTS, so uh, Visual Studio Team Services. Uh, my name is Patrick Curran. I'm a director over Plant Technologies, um, also one of their cloud and SharePoint architects. I've uh, been dealing with Azure since it first came out, uh, SharePoint since 2003, and SQL for quite a while. Right? So one of the problems that we run into uh, on a regular basis, right? We've all, I'm hoping, have all run into this. It's not just me. Right? We get into an environment, and the client says, hey, we need to stand up uh, some development environments, and um, let's try to expand them out, right? So let's, we have five developers, we want to stand up five SharePoint farms for them so each developer can go ahead and develop in their SharePoint environment, right? So some of the problems we run into from our local IT staff might be, you know, they don't want to integrate, they have security concerns, they might have problems maintaining heterogeneous environments, right? So there's kind of two perspectives, right? So we have our consumer and we have our IT admin or, or data center administrator Right? And they both have their own challenges and needs, right? So the, obviously the development staff, they want to be able to do things quickly. The IT side usually, or the, the database admin, likes putting the hold on thing, right? The brakes on stuff. Right, so let's start talking about our dev test in Azure, right? Is anybody familiar with dev test labs? Right? All right, well, this will be fun. You guys will, will get to see this in a second. Right, so we want to give the owner, right, as an IT admin, the ability to go ahead and deploy their dev test VMs, let them run things, don't bother us as much as they need to, right? We want our development team to be as self-sufficient as possible. Right, so from a dev test lab perspective, right, we want to be able to create sandbox environments, right, uh, that are consistent, right? We want our dev environments, our test environments, our UAT, our GAT environments, we want all these things to be equal across the board, right? So, you know, we've always heard the developer go, well, it worked on my machine, I don't know why it doesn't work on yours, right? Well, this kind of eliminates that, right? It gets our UAT and our, our sorry, our user acceptance testing, our government acceptance testing, all of those things across the board, they're all deployed consistently all the way through from start to finish, right? So. Azure Dev Test Labs, great for fast provisioning, automation, self-service, and cost control and government, governance, right? We don't want uh, our developers just to run amok and start deploying, you know, um, large machines, 40 CPU, 250 gig of RAM, because we'll be, you know, broke at the end of the day. Right? All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at all of this. Hopefully you guys will be able to hear me without the microphone. All right. So from within our, our Azure environment, right, we have a service called DevTest Labs, and I've created a, um, a lab itself, right? And ideally what I'm going to want to emulate is let's just stand up a server, right? That's simple, that we're going to do development in. All right, so we can go ahead and add a, um, a server, right? And we can choose the base, right? So for my development environment, I want my developers to come in. I've got five developers starting tomorrow, yeah? And I want them to start deploying some .NET code into our environment. So I've, I've limited the amount of bases, the uh, base images that I'm going to go ahead and deploy, right? So let's just go ahead and choose a Visual Studio community on server 2016. And I'm going to let our developer put a name in, uh, dev test zero, right? We're going to create an admin uh, user for the VM, right? 
put in a password. Right, and then we have the ability to choose the virtual machine size. Right, and we can actually limit this uh, so that we can apply, apply some governance. Right, like I said, we don't really want our developers running off and building out the largest machine possible when all they need is a small little web front end, right, a little web server. Right, so we're just going to grab this uh, rather large machine here, this D8S V3. And then uh, after you've selected the machine, right, Azure goes ahead and says, okay, well, you have these artifacts that you want to build out. Let's say you have a base image and you want to start building layers on top of that. So you might want to build, uh, add um, uh, SQL Server Management Studio. On top of it, you, want to might, you might want to add it to a domain. You might want to add a couple other uh, network shares. You might want to run some DSC or some PowerShell after it's been deployed. And this is where you would go and do it. The nice thing about uh, this Dev Test Labs is you have the ability to choose a code repository for what you want to Im implement onto this machine. So you'll notice that we have a public repository. And we also have a custom repository, this PC from DC demo repository, right? So these are different artifacts that I've created that I can add on top of this machine, yeah? Right. And additional settings, so what else can we do to this VM uh, as it gets deployed, right? So like I said, I've got five developers starting tomorrow, right? And I want them to be able to come on site and start working right away. So. I can go ahead and make it so that when the developer logs in, he can go and claim that VM and make it his own, so he becomes the admin of that machine, and he can be responsible for turning it on, turning it off, all of those fun things, right? So I have five coming in tomorrow, so I'm going to create five instances of this VM. It's going to do a little check to make sure I haven't broken any of the rules set up for this environment, right? And then the other nice thing about this is that when I'm done, I can go ahead and pull out the ARM template for this, yeah? So what that means is I can take this JSON code and store it up in Visual Studio Team Services, right? So VSTS, and I can use it at a later time to recreate this master image that I've just created for the development team, right? I can create five VMs again and again and again in perpetuity until I have reached my limit, um, you know, that I've set in, the governance, in my governance model, yeah? Right, so we'll go ahead and kick this off, and it's just going to start hammering out five machines, right? So me, personally, I, I like to make things easy on my development staff, right? For them, if they wanted to go, if, I mean, if I wanted to grab an ARM template and deploy it one at a time as a developer on site, right, I've got to open up PowerShell, I've got to deploy this ARM template through PowerShell. Right, but you know, for developers that are coming in, they might not be familiar with, you know, how to get into PowerShell and how to, you know, log into Azure and how to start deploying Azure templates. Um, so, f for me, I, I want to make it simple for them, right? Uh, and I'm sure the developer who's coming in new wants it simple for them too. Yeah. So within Visual Studio, right, within VSTS, we have the ability to. Um, Right, store our code, right? And we just talked about um, that template, that ARM template, right? And basically, it's based off of, you know, create a, a VM server, a, a VM Windows Server 2016, right? And that ARM template is basically what we've uploaded into VSTS, right? As well as the artifacts that we saw that we were going to to, that we customize to push into our VMs itself, right? And the nice thing about um, VSTS, now what I want to do to make my developer's life easy, right? I have a build already created, right? So if I was a developer, I could just say, hey, you know, developer, go into the build for this, look up the server 2016, and then just add it uh, into the queue for a new build. Yeah, right, so we have the ability to create the VM name, 
right? And we're just going to call it test VM um, one, right? We can add uh, additional disks to the machine, right? So if this is a, if we're deploying a SharePoint server, we might add 16 to 32 data disks, might raid them together, so we have better SQL performance, right? And then um, you know, how large do we want each one of these data disks to be, right? So we can go ahead and add that into the queue, and what that's going to do is it's going to actually start building as well, right? So in the background, right, if we take a look at what this is doing behind the scenes, it's essentially just stepping through um, an order of what we're trying to accomplish, right? So it's going to um, create the VM first, and then uh, it's going to add the data disks, and then I have it doing a, a couple of things in the background with a di different ARM template. And that's it, right? So the developer has several options for you to uh, go ahead and create these, um, these different labs and different VMs. So let's go ahead and take a look and see where we're at. Right, so you can see that our uh, dev test, our five machines, were starting to become, uh, are starting to be created. Right, and if we take a look at our uh, build, and take a look at build number 63 here. And it's already starting to build the server out. Right. So one of the nice things, you'll notice that, uh, you know, I have three machines that failed deployment, right? So we talked about governance for just a little bit, right? So I only have X amount of CPUs that I can deploy, right? Because like I said, I don't want my developers running away and spending thousands of dollars per day if we don't need to, right? So. Uh, basically, I filled up my quota for the number of CPU that I can assign for those VMs, right? All right, so um, I guess that's a quick demo of how to use uh, dev test labs and using your Visual Studio Team Services integration to deploy uh, VMs. So thank you very much. So the question was, where do we set up the governance rules for the dev test labs? Um, within the uh, dev test lab itself, there is a configuration um, setting, right? You just click on configuration, and it gives you the options for, um, you know, how many VMs per user, how many, you know, what machine sizes are okay, what build images can you use, uh, and it goes all the way down through. Uh, things that are, you know, I consider really important. Um, when does my machine, when does this machine automatically turn off, right? So you can set machines, to, all your machines to turn off at, you know, 6.30 p.m., right? So that's, uh, that's all right in there in the configuration within uh, your dev test lab. I have one follow-up question. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So the um, uh, you definitely can set up um, permissions that way. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Well, that's so. That's an excellent question, right? So, how do we lock it down so that they can't? Uh, open up to the whole world. 
Um, so th the way deaf test works is it's kind of a, 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 an offshoot of, it's almost like a little mini Azure within Azure itself, right? So while you have VMs and all of those things within the dev test lab, they still kind of live in Azure itself. And you can go into like the network load balancer for that machine and lock things down. Uh, but basically, you know, once you get into your dev test lab, you are just a contributor for, contributor for that machine, right? You don't have access to that network load balancer to open it up for the, the rest of the world, right? No. No, they just have access. And once you take contributor, once you take um, ownership of that uh, VM, that's, that's it. You can only work within that VM itself, unless I've assigned you um, uh, rights outside of dev test labs to something within that resource group. Right? Yeah, and I'll, I'll be around, so feel free to stop me. So with that, Mark, you want to Sure. Thank you.